Okay, we are live. Uh, Eric just tried to hop out, and uh, it looks like he was trying I to ditch away. us, but but I pulled him back in at the last second. So he's live, and he can't run anywhere now. Hey, what's um, up? Not much. Uh, start off with just saying who I am, uh, and then we'll get to talking about you. But uh, Andy, uh, Kalen, others who are going to join us live either now or later on, uh, you should know that I'm Jason with Brave Daily, and uh, we get to sit down and talk with authors, pastors, different influencers around around the globe, actually. Uh, but a lot of a lot of folks who are just paving the way for the Christian uh, culture. And Eric's one of those people that uh, we've randomly connected and have talked about all sorts of stuff, yeah. uh, including some Brave Daily stuff. But uh, we'll get to that later on, maybe. Um, Eric, uh, you you have a lot of different things going on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where to start with the introduction, right but yeah, uh, I saw a banner that looks like you're going to be playing at a festival soon. I saw yeah. an, an album published on iTunes. I think I've read that you're you toured with Casting Crowns. Now I might be making stuff up. I'm not sure. No, I I was their opener a few years ago, and yeah, God, yeah, is, so. God is good, man. I just like right now, yeah, life's a little hectic. It's a little crazy, and uh, you know, trying to trying to keep everything functioning and balance right now it's, yeah so if someone would ask you you know what you do um what, what I would do. you say <laughs> uh as little as possible would probably be my initial response but um no really i'm <laughs> um i would say what do i do man i love jesus and i i love to i love to play music and i love to worship and and i love to uh actually i don't really love to do it but i find myself doing it more than i would like is watching netflix but uh yeah that's fair Fair enough. That's fair. What's, what's your favorite then? Other than Stranger Things, what do you watch? Because <laughs> if you don't watch things. Stranger Things, we can end this thing right now. Oh, man. I don't know. Can we talk about copyright stuff on here? <laughs> nope. Um, yeah. No, man. That's God, fair. God, is, uh, God has been good, man. It's been it's been a very cool season of growing in a lot of ways the past you know number of months. That, uh, even since January, just, just what are we in May now? Holy smokes, it's May 2nd already. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. But it's been a cool season of growing in a lot of ways and just seeing how God's been working my heart, working my life, and stretching me way outside my comfort zones. And it's been good. Yeah. So um, yeah. before we get – I do want to talk about writing songs for the church. I want that to yeah. kind of be the crux or the focus of this. But uh, you have an album out. Um, yeah. Man. I've listened to it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, Thanks, man. I, we should – we should you should drop a link in the side if you can for anybody who's joining in okay. at a later date. But uh, sure. there's a uh, tell me and tell us a little bit about that album and like what you got got you to the point of actually sitting down and putting it together yeah. and why you why you did. Wow, man, I really don't even know. No I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's just one of those things that happened. No, um, it just happened. I just woke up. It was there. No, in all reality, just it's it's a long story, and I'll give you the nutshell version. It's a God thing. Um, the way it all happened. So I just want to first say a shout out to Chris Hoisington and Brothers McClurg and um, Old Bear Studio and and all those guys who kind of worked with me on this project. Um, it was a, a labor of love for sure. And it's part one of a two part project. Um, part one obviously is done and out already. Um, part two is kind of in the works and is, um, you know, planning on going into the studio early next year and um, and cutting that for a release of, of at some point next year. Um, yeah, the story behind it is, man, you know, God was doing all sorts of cool stuff in my life a few years ago. And, um, you know, I had a kind of, was having a lot of success for being a younger guy and, uh, and God had to humble me, man. You know, God had to do a lot in my heart and, um, and, uh, through a, a number of circumstances and events, um, you know, God, uh, kind of took me from, doing things like opening for casting crowns to selling cars to, you know, doing the, the complete opposite of, of what, uh, what I had felt the Lord's calling in my life was and what I had been doing. And man, it was, it was painful. I'm not going to lie about it, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. but looking back in retrospect to, to see the, the character growth that God did in my heart and, and just the way that he taught me how to be better loved by him, how to love people better and just to, um, and just what it means to, to serve people better, you know, and to kind of develop in that pastor heart a little more, you know? Yeah. And we uh, talked about yeah. this process a little bit, like when we first connected yeah. and it was this like 
I think we both resonated on the fact that if we would have just got thrown into some sort of leadership position, then it would have been like bad news bears. Yeah, like it for real. pretty dreadful both for ourselves and for the people that we were yeah. leading at the time. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that was a, an interesting point. We both kind of hit that spot where it's like, okay, we have all this training, we have all this experience and yeah. now we're just going to go and we're just going to change the world. Right. We're just like, like every, <laughs> we're gonna, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, it's, it was cool to kind of resonate yeah. or to, to both sit on that same point that sometimes you need to slow down and even be in this, this state of just rest and yeah. quiet before you mm. get kicked into some other next chapter or however you want to say yeah, it. So for real. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was kind of the launching pad to, you know, creating this, this project. And, um, you know, I had developed a really cool relationship with, um, Chris Hoisington from Brothers McClurg and um, you know it just one day he was just like dude we gotta start writing man and I was like yeah cool you know I, I thought <laughs> that part of my life was kind of I don't know I didn't really know what I thought about that part of my life I thought it was kind of yeah. on the shelf and you know and uh, I kind of left it on the shelf for a little while and, and Chris will tell you just kind of months went by and he was like you know dude you know we really should start writing and like we need to talk about getting you out here to old bear and then cutting an album and i was like whoa slow down man and uh you know that kind of that thought kind of terrified me a little bit at first but you know i just mm -hmm. felt like god was just kind of saying man it's, it's time let's do this and uh you know and it was a big leap of faith and and god made a way and and all the pieces came together and and we went out and uh, did a, a writing retreat and, um, and then a few months later, we went into the studio and, and cut part one. And, um, and that was kind of the story yeah. behind that. I mean, obviously, each individual songs have their own stories attached to those, you know. But um, as far as the project goes, it's, it's called Join the Song, Volume 1. And uh, the idea behind that mm. is um, it's, great. it's a worship project. So it's right out of the gate. It's a, it's a, it's a challenge for people of just saying, you know, we're here to worship. So join the song. Join the song in, in your daily life, in your, in, your, in, your, in your church. You know, the idea that, you know, it's, it's a collective. It's not just one voice, you know, in a sense of one person, but it's one voice in the sense of all of us coming together and uh, in worship to, to God and to our king, you know. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the idea behind I, that, that concept. Yeah. I have two really important questions from that. Yeah. The first is, how does Chris get his hair the way it is? Oh, man. Because it's this like huge. Yeah. No, I don't want to say Afro, it but it kind of is, you know, I wish we had a picture. We could, do you have a picture we could throw? You up? know, let me see. On the, um, because it's amazing. I have a more important question in a okay. second, but that is just every time I see him, I'm going to, um, it just like blows my mind. I don't know how he does it. And it's got to, it's got to take hours, uh, a day. You know, a couple things on that note. The first thought is it's kind of <laughs> like, He's like Samson, all right? If you cut the hair, he just stops being cool, all right? That's the end um, right there. And then the other thing is um, I got in – like, for instance, when we were out tracking, I was staying with him and his, his beautiful wife, Susie. And, um, we were we were hanging out in the morning. Um, what, well, no, we were hanging out that night, and um, everything was, was cool. The hair was normal. I wake up first thing in the morning. Like, this is like after getting maybe three, four hours of sleep. And uh, I yeah. walk out to the kitchen, and, and there's Chris – having just come out of the shower and his hair was like in a completely different form and it kind of, so you didn't know who I was it like, was. holy smokes, what just happened? So, you know, that's uh, it's definitely interesting to see the phases of, of hair with Chris, but um, yeah, it's, he's a, he's an amazing guy an amazing artist. And there you go right there. Yep. Um, he, is, there uh, is. he is the guy with the hair, man. But uh, secondly, and more important in, in something that I do want to get at, you were talking about writing and actually sitting down and writing. Yeah. Um, are you leading, uh, in a church in any way right now? And uh, yeah, I guess that's the first question. I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even remember. I'm leading yeah. over at, at compelled, um, church okay. over in Troy, um, but kind okay. of helping out and being, uh, in the worship area with them for the past, man, it's been close to a year. Um, yeah. And talk about the, the difference and this will start to get us into the conversation, but the difference of writing your own music and how that changes and influences the culture of the church versus, um, I don't know, just picking up someone else's music and playing that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something that, um, it really comes out of developing relationships with people in the church and the community. Um, at least that's the way I look at it. You know, you have to be, yeah developing those relationships and out of those relationships comes 
understanding of where people are at and just from doing life with people, you know, like, Hey, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, Andy's kind of going through this thing right now, or Earl's going through this thing right now, or, you know, <laughs> you know, name somebody else that, you know, I know in my church or community that's kind of going through something and, you know, whether it be a, a really great thing or it could be something that's really not so great, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and being able to write songs, um, that speak to my own life, my own heart, as well as the people that are specifically around me and doing life with me. Um, and in writing those prayer songs that are kind of relevant to the community that we're in develops, um, first kind of a, a culture of, of prayer. Um, and then secondly, uh, kind of a, a culture of, of collectively as a church singing and praying these songs in worship, you know, um, there's, mm -hmm. I've, you know, I mean, I love it when, you know, I can pick up, you know, name whatever great worship artist or band and, you know, play tracks off their newest album and it's great. Um, but I think there's mm -hmm. something special that, um, comes with the mantle of, of, of a worship pastor, um, is somebody who can, yes, lead a congregation in worship, but can also shepherd a congregation in such a way that um, out of those relationships with the people in this community and in his church to develop prayers and, and songs out of those prayers for, for the church mm -hmm. that can, they can sing collectively kind of going, harkening back to the join the song idea, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and I kind of feel like it's not too much different for any position in the church and maybe I'm just make jumping to, you know, jumping to conclusions, sure. but even a pastor that gives a sermon, um, if all you're doing is, speaking these disjointed lessons that you're studying and stuff's boiling up and you're not talking directly to the people that are sitting with you and doing life with you and who you're meeting with and hearing those stories. And, you know, you're kind of circling back around where you're, you're writing a sermon. That's basically an answer to some of the things that they've been talking about. If all you're doing is <laughs> yelling at people um, from the pulpit or from the stage, yeah. whether you're a worship singer or a worship pastor or a, a pastor, you know, a preaching pastor, um, then I feel like you're kind of missing part of your responsibilities as a leader. Like, I feel like it's kind of this reflection of the people that you're hanging out with and mm. all you're doing is sitting in your studio and recording and that's the end of it. Yeah. Um, or learning songs from that you hear on the radio, then it's cool. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but and like I said, there's, there's nothing wrong that. with, um, with playing songs on the radio. Like I don't want to ever be, be thought of that in yeah. a negative light. Yeah, I, mean, sure. I mean, that's definitely, I mean, God has put, those songs in a position to be church for a reason, you know, um, you know, the way I, I look at it, specifically when, when I talk to songwriters, you know, um, every song that I write, it's, um, it's kind of like a baby, you know, it's like you, you see the, 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 what life was like before it came into being and how it was came into being. And then just, you get to watch it grow and, and go places. And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, you're writing a, a song specifically as a, as a worship guy, I'm writing a song specifically for, for God and what he's done in my life and, and for my church, you know? Um, and then if God wants to have, take that into a, a different realm, a different sphere, then that's, that's great. You know, um, you know, sure. You can start getting into all the business world of the music business and all that jazz, but, um, but strictly from a writer's perspective, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to write a song that, that speaks to my heart and speaks to the people around me, you know, um, and then ultimately God's in control of wh how far that goes. So I say that to bring it full circle to say that, you know, these songs are obviously brought to the capital C church for a purpose and God allows that. And, and they're used in, it yeah. in such a way that I have a, brings glory I have a to question himself and, and encourages the body. You, and that's but I'm going to put you thing. on the spot a little bit. Um, but no, I, as you're talking about it, I'm kind of thinking of both and, and so you have these, oh, no. these prayer and worship songs that that you're that you're alluding to and so you're writing this for the, this body of believers that are worshiping with you and you're sharing in that whether it's a prayer or celebration or thanksgiving you know whatever it is these different songs that you've written but what about the people that are coming in uh that aren't part of the body and so they're coming in and they're just like wow this is interesting but like mm. i have no idea what's going on here and i don't know that i even want to be part of this yeah. it's kind of weird i might leave so cool. how would you respond to something like that? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it really yeah. comes down to a couple things. One, it comes down to the art of songwriting, right? And it comes down to um, 
I guess, the design of, of a worship service, you know. Um, so I'll break it down into two categories. One is a songwriter and one is a worship leader. Um, as a songwriter, yes, I'm going to write a song that's going to speak to my heart and to the heart of my community. Um, but I'm also going to write it in such a way where it's still um, accessible, you know. I mean, that's kind of the idea behind a good corporate worship song, corporate prayer song is that it's accessible to people, you know. Um, you know, otherwise you start getting into like harp and bowl stuff and, and free worship, which is cool and has its place, you know. Um, but if you're you're yeah. talking about, you know, corporate Sunday morning, hey, good morning, welcome, blah, blah, blah. You know, let's sing a song that declares our God saves. I don't know. Um, you're going to do um, songs that are going to be accessible to both people who are are there um, as well who are regularly part of the congregation, but also people who are, who are visiting people who may not even know Christ, you know? So that's, that's the key. And, and to kind of steal a line from a guy I look up to a lot is Paul Balash, uh, to steal a line from him. Okay. Um, you're, you're like a host at a barbecue, you know, when you're a worship leader. Um, so you gotta think, you gotta think, uh, you gotta have something for the kids. You gotta have something for the old folks. You gotta have something for everybody, you know? Um, and, and you're, you gotta think of it as you're a host, you know, as a worship leader. So to, to the flip side of that coin, um, you know, actually, I think I already addressed that now that I think about it. Um, I think I explained that question from the songwriter's perspective as well as from the worship leader's perspective. It really just comes down to writing a song that that's accessible and also just designing, you know, a worship yeah. service that's, that's accessible to, um, to everybody, you know? Um, and ultimately at the end of the day, God is the one who speaks yeah, to people's fair. hearts. I can't argue it's with up that to us to create that platform <laughs> in the best way possible. No, I mean, you just kind of got me thinking while you were sharing, a, um, that was a good question, writing the music man. and then good. sharing with the congregation that experience. And so, yeah, I don't know. There's just this, there's this tendency for people to be kind of yeah. on the flip side so that everyone's comfortable when they come in. But I don't know. It's a Sure. What do you do about Joe Schmo who's walking in the door who, yeah. you know, whose wife just left him or, you know, his house is in foreclosure or something, you know, and, you know, just lost their job. And they're like, man, like, you know, I'm kind of at the end of my rope or, you know, or man, my wife just dragged me to church and like, I don't really even want to be here. And what's, what's the, who's this dude up here with weird sneakers and a guitar, man? You know, like, what is this, you know? Um, so it's, it's a matter of just of creating an atmosphere for people to be, to find it accessible yeah, that's, to respond that's to, um, to what God's doing. In so the I'll close the life, with, you know? Uh, you know, you given an opportunity to share your website uh, and then mentioning your new album one more time. And then where people just can follow your story, um, where they can reach out to you if they want to learn more or even talk yeah. to you more. Uh, so go ahead and yeah. share some of that. Cool. Thanks. You know, you can go to, well, my story, my, my yeah. site is at Eric Michael blog. Every, again, my name is spelled E-R-I-K. My dad <laughs> named me with Eric with a K, which is, I found as I've grown up is, isn't the most uh, common way to spell Eric. And, uh, you know, everywhere I go and I'll go well, to Starbucks. Starbucks and be like, oh, hey, you know, what's your name? Wrong. Eric. It's, and what I is, so. I'm like, it's with a K. So, right. Okay. It's all good. So um, I'm just picking on Starbucks. But anyway, um, if you go to ericmichaelblog.com, um, you can find um, the Join the Song Project on there, as well as um, part of my story and a bit of what God's been doing in my life, as well as you know different things and blog posts that I've been putting up and I'm putting up. Um, so I encourage you guys to check that out. Um, also, just want to give a shout out um, since uh, Chris had asked to uh, give a shout out to Jason Norton great. and the Great Tabernacle Campaign and the Here and Now Festival that's coming up out in Batavia, New York. Um, I'm gonna be out there with great. Elevation Worship and Brothers McClurg and and some cool cats like that um, later this year, and we're really looking forward to that. Um, but the other thing I just kind of want to say is I'd love to hear your stories as uh, what God's doing in your life as as uh, as ministers in, in in your homes and in your churches and and you know love to to find a way to encourage you and, and even partner with you guys if, if an opportunity came to to do that and and uh in in uh doing an actual worship leader and ministry at, at your church or in just encouraging you in some way be, and, and if anyone wanted really to have cool that conversation just of check out the website our heart and, what we and love to do. they can contact you through that cool yeah Yep, contact me right through the website, ericmichaelblog.com, and either Great. myself or cool. Darren well, or, or one Eric, of the guys. Eric, I appreciate having you. Um, 
Yeah, awesome. I think I think we'll do it again. I hope we'll do it again. Man, um, Jason, thanks for having me. And uh, I'll fun. definitely be keeping in touch with you. Uh, anyone who yeah. wants to reach out to Eric, he's a solid guy, good heart. Um, and that's why I keep reaching out to him to talk more about all this fun stuff. So uh, thank you once again. And I'll talk to you soon, man. You yeah, bet. man. Awesome. Thanks, guys.